Welcome back once again, ladies and gentlemen, to the Bravo stream. It is finally time for our next matchup. Last one went a little bit too quickly, so we had to go on a little bit of a break. I hope you guys enjoyed the festivities while we were checking out, of course, that very nice game between TSM and Liquid. And now we get ready to move on to our next one here, which is going to be Fury up against Space Station Gaming. It's a very similar situation to our last game. Both of these both of these teams ended up dropping both of their initial games yesterday, so they currently sit, I believe, with zero points inside of their group and are looking to get their first points here inside of this matchup. And much like our last matchup as well, at least for me, it's looking a lot more promising for one team at this point. Yeah, it's going to be Space Station Gaming, isn't it? Yeah, SSG looks to be the uh, hallmark team in these two squads, obviously not accounting for W7M and Team BDS uh, inside of that, who stood stalwart yesterday up against their opposition. I will say, though, that Fury did have a pretty interesting game versus BDS. They kind of fell off the wagon there, though, yeah. inside of the mid-game and couldn't put all of the pieces together, but I mean, it's pretty difficult to do up against a pretty feisty squad like BDS. So, But Dark, I will say, had quite the game. Just to make sure you guys have the full picture here as well, BDS and W7M, I believe, are going to be playing each other over on the Alpha streams. Make sure you guys are over there if you're wanting to check that game out and see who ends up topping out this group among the first round of games. Important to note, of course, we still have the whole second round to run through. Here are the qualification chances for each team based on the win or loss of this upcoming round. And indeed, as you can see, much like our last group, again, things look almost identical in this current situation. It's going to be about a quarter percent chance for either team if they take the outright victory here over time. They knock about 10% from their chances. If they take the loss, they're in a pretty tough spot here as that's now three games deep. They've gone into this group the first full run of games, in fact, halfway through and not a single point necessarily to be claimed. It's a little bit better, of course, with the overtime loss if they're able to get that one point at least, but still, things will need to be absolutely perfect from that point forward for the team that ends up losing this matchup. Absolutely. So Space Station goes up against BDS yesterday. They lose 7-5, pretty even killed across the leaderboard. Nobody able to crack a 1.0 rating. But then we look across the fence to this W7M game. Tell me what happened here. Yeah, unfortunately, there's no one really showing up for Space Station at the end of the day. We saw, again, decent rounds every once in a while, but the stats are pretty lackluster at the end of it. Uh, and as well, only three rounds picked up in that matchup versus W7M. W7M absolutely hitting the ground running, it seems like, in yesterday's games, much like BDS did, of course. So no slouches inside of that matchup. But of course, needing to make up for it here today. As Stokes mentioned, we've seen some good stuff out of Fury. The big problem for them so far is the fact that, again, they are newer to this international circuit. And that means, again, they're lacking a little bit of experience when it comes to playing against teams in other regions. And more importantly, being able to adapt their own play style once they get figured out. That was the big problem for them in the matchup yesterday. An amazing first two rounds. Once BDS ran into them, though, and started countering them, things went downhill pretty quickly. And I would expect a similar situation to possibly unfold in this matchup. Absolutely. You know, when you think about playing on stage in front of a lot of people, that is already something that is a little anxiety ridden. But then you go, hey, this is your first time that you're going to go play in front of a load of people. And well, it hasn't worked out the greatest for Fury just yet, but hopefully here soon it will. And I mean, sick we tat. have seen some sick tattoos so far from all of our Siege professionals. We were looking at Nesk yesterday. I do believe that's Rampy. I, if I know I my tattoo, Yes, yes, I do know my tattoos, and it is new. He got it this year. Oh, I was about to say, uh, I haven't yeah. seen it before. Yeah, so I think he got it like a handful of months ago or something Ooh, along okay. those lines. Yeah, but either way, some fantastic sleeves and everything in between from these guys. All right, we got the vetoes ready to go. Let's go ahead and get that up on the screen and see where we ended up at. It's the band down to one procedure, of course, as we're best of one for all the matches here in the groups, and it eventually ended up coming out of theme park at the end of the day, so we'll play into that one. It is going to be a new map here for Space Station as they have not gone over into this territory just as of yet. I knew I recognized that face on that bench from Fury. Napew from Elevate is on this roster. I hadn't noticed that yesterday. You and I were very tired casting that That's Fury true. game. So, again, very excited uh, to see what Fury can do. Uh, Dark back in here. I've been really enjoying seeing his play, so excited to see what he can do up against our North American brethren. Yeah, Dark had a little bit of a Greek tragedy in my opinion, in yesterday's game, though, as we saw him pick up four back-to-back -back quad kills inside of the first two rounds, then unfortunately only got a single kill after that throughout the rest of the game, if memory serves me correctly. So I want to see a little bit more consistency in his department going into this matchup today. The real focus for him, or for this team overall, I think was I-9. I-9 was the picture of consistency in yesterday's matchups, always making those decent contributions and trying his best for sure to keep Fury in the round, even when the outlook was not the greatest for the overall team. 
SSG, of course, you guys should certainly be aware of the big stars for this squad as of yet, but we still are waiting to see who exactly is going to show up at this event. It really could be any one of them. Even Hot and Cold, of course, has had his days. For people that remember the tail end of the NAL season last year, he was absolutely shutting it down inside of the IGL position as well. Uh, but as usual, we have seen those early land struggles show up for SSG as they're still trying to get their right foot forward here in the first two matches. All right, Napew, we got the beat on you now. You were hiding yesterday, but I-9 is Napew. That oh, is why. Gotcha. I had to I had to do my due diligence. I had to do my research. We cross-referenced. We went over to Liquipedia. We figured it out, John. Pretty good detective. Well, there you go. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are getting very, very close to match time here, so we'll have to wait and see. Will SSG be able to overwhelm Fury with their defensive start on Theme Park here? Will their aggression mean how Fury is? Yeti, man, Yeti's getting hyped. He's Yeti. ready to rock and roll. But Yeti, the camera's right there. Yeti, you gotta calm down. We're not even ready. We still got like 30 seconds. Chill that out. Man, that man's three energy drinks deep. He's probably like smelled the smelling salts. He's went for like three mile runs this morning. Uh, it's ridiculous ridiculous what this man puts himself through and then he still somehow shows up and plays extremely fiery i i have always loved myself some xander gameplay and just across the board of space station gaming one of my favorite organizations to watch throughout the history of rainbow six siege and hopefully this is another start here for north america making a good run at the major but it's going to take a lot for ssg to bounce back from what happened yesterday with that o2 start Guys, what's well, going to be do or die time here in this matchup for both of these teams, putting them in a near elimination position already if they drop this matchup for Fury and SSG. This is a must win matchup, so all focus is on this game for both of these teams. Once again, to top out the group as well, if you're curious to see who is going to end up in that position, that'll be over on our primary stream as we'll be seeing those two teams go up against each other. Let's get into it though, as on the Alpha stream, we'll have W7M against BDS, but here on Bravo, it's SSG versus Fury. Fury, let's get into it. Theme park, theme park, theme park. Always a fun map when it comes down to it, unless you're playing from the offensive side of things, at least. The defensive side will be taken up by SSG to start us off here with Fury, obviously on the offense by proxy. SSG is gonna have the first ban, and that's gonna be headed towards Doka B as we get you through the fly-in and into the ban phase. No logic bombs will be available to the offense, and ne uh, neither will be the Candelas of Yank. We have seen quite a bit of Dokubi being used against SSG on this map inside of the NAL, so makes perfect sense while we're going to see the band come out here. Ying as well uh, is going to be an interesting one here. Not as much play towards Ying, but uh, at least inside of the North American side for the two of us. But we have seen every once in a while be used specifically for throne room takes, if memory serves me correct. It's been pretty useful there to be able to chuck it down the hatch and be able to surprise the opponents on the inside. Well, if you, if you think about it as well, there's also just a lot of areas where you're going to have immediate access to positioning that the defense wants to hold on to. Things like cafe upstairs, uh, you know, uh, storage down low when you play in uh, lab and storage, stuff like that where you have easy access for those Candelas, it just makes it to where they mean even more uh, to what could happen to the overall story of the round. Now, though, we're getting into round one. Let's see what both of these squads want to do. Who will they represent as we climb on in? It's going to be an armory throne room defense here for SSG. Azami making it through the band phase, not something that we've seen too often here. Valkyrie and Mira, the two defensive operators have been removed from the pool. No surprises on those defensive bands. Pretty straightforward in terms of the picks from either team there, but let's take a look at the actual operator selects, of course, moving into the first round. SSG on the defensive start, and now gonna be giving us nothing too surprising when it comes to their setup here for the throne room defense. Very mobile setup, obviously, as they want to play out and about for that first two minutes of play and then round themselves back into a much more defensive play for the tail end of the round with Hotten, of course, throwing out those cap can traps that can hopefully trip up a few of the Fury members that maybe, once again, are not gonna be able to focus so much on the side of those doors, especially if they get strapped for time. You, of course, have Fultz who's going to be able to waste plenty of time on the Azami being able to throw down the free cover time and time again. And then inside of the site, we have additional things as well. Bosco being able to contend against smoke or flash dumps if we end up getting it. Looks like we are going to get a little bit of smoke action from Fury and the side from that as well. Plenty more to resist the push from Fury in the site. Yeah, SSG operator line wise, uh, kind of wearing their heart on their sleeve, aren't they? You know, they're, they're trying to stand and bang with Fury early here and they're going to slowly fall back to site. If things do 
go wrong, they have Bosco there to try and pick up the pieces. He's got that Nitro Cell and also Warden to be able to see through smokes and flashes. So always a solid option uh, to use in a scenario like this. Because you can see Space Station want to try and hold the full breadth of this map. And this starts over here with Dragon, as well as Fultz standing on top of that area. He'll be playing around the cache space. We see a lot of people playing right on that metal paneling in there. Uh, great positioning uh, to try and utilize up against the cache balcony. Two fire positions being lined up by Fury, but certainly not getting any outright aggression from SSG just yet. Had a little bit of a swing come in there, I think, from Fultz a few minutes ago. A drum entry that just dealt with the Gemini, though, so nothing really gained from the shots he threw out. Of course, Dark already has it ready to go for a second run, and maybe getting in a position to line that up now, but it's going to be I-9 spotted out first here by Rampy as he picks up the opening kill of the match. Oh. Kind of a flex pick there with the Ace. Always a solid option to look into when you're looking for some extra hard breach. Got that AK-12 as well. So you can get those frags if you need them. But for I-9, he's cold and dead to the world at the current moment. So it's going to be up to the rest of the squad and Lycalus to stay alive so they can get these breaches open. We're already halfway through this round, John. Fury have not been able to figure out this puzzle just yet. SSG have so much going for them. G-Man sneaks past one of the top down angles that was set up by SSG. This could be big if he's able to move this forward correctly. We'll peer through it in a moment. It does seem like the defensive setup from SSG has rotated away from this, but BG Man still with an opportunity to strike. Got to see though as he's gonna move forward here. Catches Yeti, unaware to the push that he had made before. Dark as well striking with his first entry on the round. Also, evens us back out and actually puts Fury in front of the situation here. Obviously, like Holus being a little bit low. So it makes this a bit of a delicate lead for Fury, but it is them in front of the situation now with 45 seconds to go. Well, don't forget our big red button on site. Bosco can save this one if necessary. SSG, at least for hot and cold's sake, he's going to drop back down. Actually, no, that was Rampy that committed to that hatch drop. Hot and cold still upstairs inside of the bathroom. He's going to rotate in through cash here, and he might be able to drop in behind them through Teller's. Love the barricades here as well. It's really going to suppress that audio coming from this area, and they're already all the way across the map over inside of maintenance. So this is a beautiful angle adopted from Hot and Cold, and good spell demise for Fury. Some nice shots here. Hot and Cold can't pick up either of those kills. They will get the down, though. BG Man not picked up. Lycalus will be, though. It's down to Dark. We saw him perform so very well yesterday, but not up against SSG. Three for Rampy, two for Hot and Cold, and looks like SSG has found themselves here early today. Day. Fury, I think, just relying a little bit too much on the opening kills they found and that op that opening advantage they had, bringing it down to a 4v3, thinking they might have been able to work the site directly because of that, did not have the best intel about where SSG's final three players were positioned at, and as such, all three of them essentially get off with a free kill there once Fury works their way into the site, and there isn't much player power left on Fury to try and trade that back out, so they're in a pretty weak position when they ultimately try to work their way into Throne there. Yeah, I'd really just like to point out that Fury didn't do enough soul-searching there. We didn't see them try and work the map and figure out what SSG was doing. They just went about things like they normally would, and they got severely punished for that. I-9 gets picked off the window. You don't, you no longer have your A's shorty down a man, and you have to try and work from that uh, positioning. SSG doing a very good job of playing with the timer there and forcing Fury to try and play their hand, and I'd say they at least did a good job in that, right? They get the kills necessary to push themselves forward and try and get onto site, but that's where SSG made matters most, uh, you know, strong for them, as they were able to to get that rotation from Rampy back onto site. Those big kills coming from him and Houghton on the flank that he eventually went for through the hatch. As we start at the round, taking a look at the operator picks. A little bit of a different showing this time from Fury, certainly trying to make their execute a bit more potent. Obviously adding in the Osaw specifically for I-9. We'll see the Florida has come out for BG Man 2, hopefully dealing with a little bit more of the utility setup, maybe opening up a few soft breach positions also this team to utilize getting them deeper into the building. The defensive setup will change accordingly to the site. We are actually going to keep Rampy over here onto the warren just to be able to fend off once again against those flash or smoke dump plays. We tend more aggressively against that type of utility heavy execute. Aside from that though, big utility mitigation coming in from Yeti and then some cover picks along oh. too. Some shots coming in there though early on. Not going to be met with damage against any player however. Oh, turn on a dime. Yeti saving his deployable shield there from the uh, Eventuality of the Rotero drone, as I don't think he's going to get it this time. Absolutely not. Perky ears the first time around, but not 
this one. Oh, he impacted it. Yeti, what a big brain play. I forgot that you could even do that. Well, looks like he's going to be able to get, I think, yeah, that's three. Oh, BG, man. Oh, BG, man. This is not what you want to see out of your Rotero-wielding Flores. Is I think he's committing again to trying to get this shield. No, he's going to try and go somewhere else through. He'll finally get it, and uh, another impact out. Does he save the shield? He does. This is such a smart play from Space Station Gaming. Lycan, you beautiful man. What a beautiful setup there. That's going to keep that shield, and Fury's wasted so much much time just trying to play around with Yeti in Cafe. I9 had the makings of a play initially on the oh inside of Sight Hotten as well. Beautiful fend off. We had like three to four shots go out there from the G-Mate before a response even showed up from Hot and Cold, but still he shuts him down anyway. 4v2 is now the status quo. Lycolis and BG Man are all that remain for Fury in this round as SSG just looking to wrap things up here for their own personal oh. second. But hold on, we're not done just yet. BG Man picks up two at an absolutely nowhere. Yeti and Fultz now down for the count, and Hotten already injured from his previous encounters. Fury we absolutely know this too. They are cyber targeting hot right now. Well, may have been misguided in the Rotero drones, but finding his way when it comes to the kills, two versus two, hot and cold. The downward position, low HP, but that SMG 11, we saw how damning it can be in the proper hands, and he's already got three inside of this round. Bosco, nice angle here, holding it into bunker. Nothing will be found as the rotation will come through here over towards the arcade balcony. Hot and cold finds himself in hot water here, but potentially a frag coming through, trying to play off of this shield for the back end of bunker onto this arcade door. Very, very strong positioning thus far from SSG. Lycalus will hit his mark, though, in this plant more than likely coming soon. Bosco, he'll go for the reposition, as will the rest of the squad for Fury. Oh, it's going to be a cancel here. They believe they heard him. He's going to have to try and stick this. It's just a little over on time, but he's got the smoke. He's got the cancel. Lycalus, he tries to stick it through. The damage coming through. Oh, my! Bosco shows his face. You can see it on his face as well. He knew how strong that was of a finish. Bosco makes SSG go up 2-0. Beautiful clutch from Bosco. Valiant attempt to come into it as well. BG Man bringing the Fury round back from the brink there, knocking out the two players that have been holding on Cafe side and opening up the plan opportunity to begin with, but not enough as we see it once again. Bosco with a big clutch still keeps SSG in control at the 2-0. Yeah, if this guy was a Madden character, he would have an X factor for Clutch, let me tell you. The guy is disgusting, always has been, always will be. Smoke, probably his best operator of all time, bread and butter. Him and Chala, just the goats of that characteristic of Smoke. Being able to use the SMG-11, your toxic babes, and that shotgun to full use. And Bosco, just showcasing exactly what he is capable of in round two with that Clutch. Fury, not able to get enough done there. BG man early on. A lot of dancing with the Rotero drones. Yeti doing a very good job of countering that out. I love the impact play there. Again, that's one I'm going to be using when I'm home. I'm going to set that shield up. I'm like, hey man, you got impacts? Awesome. That Rotero drone comes in? Impact that thing. Don't let it get that shield. So, awesome stuff uh, from Yeti there. But BG man really able to pick it up towards the end of that round and give Fury a fighting chance. So for BG Man and the rest of Fury, gonna be looking to see if they can turn that fighting chance into a one round here for the first time in the game. 2-0 start so far from SSG, oh. and then I'll move over. I think the gloves have came off here for I-9. Yeah. We're no longer on the ace. That's usually what we see for, you know, our heart breacher's delight. That's what I look at ace as. You've got that AK-12 that we love to talk about, 1.5 on there, Claymores and the Somas, just an overall amazing kit. But Zofia, definitely still that fragging character, especially partnered with those concussions in that soft breach. A lot of fun to play. Very frustrating composition in the meanwhile from SSG that they've switched over to. We've seen faults before here on the Capcan, or at least another member of the team picking it up previously but now we've added three other trap operators, so to speak, on top of this as well. Yeti bringing the Goyo canisters into play for some great delay utility. Hot and cold, adding those, adding those, uh, excuse me, the goo mines down to the floor as well. And then Rampy also bringing the Banshees down to the floor. Also, there's a lot for Fury to take out. And unfortunately, most of this is really not optional utility. You can't really ignore a lot of this with maybe the goo mines being the really only one that you could just step past them. Now, the biggest issue right now is that this is basically buffed the setup for SSG on site, even if they 
go for kind of the one-man show like we were seeing uh, uh, for the majority of the time on Throne with Bosco playing in there. You still have those Goyo canisters around that take up so much time. 20 seconds of burn on those, the longest in the game, but obviously you have to set them up preemptively and then pop them in order to make that happen. Not as easy as something like Smoke where you simply throw and forget. Oh. From BG Man. Fultz realizes it's on the way and is forced out into the open. Gets away from the nade, but can't get away from his death. The good news, though, Hot and Colt still translated it into a trade. And there is a chance, a chance, unfortunately, to save Fultz, but it will not work out. Hotten as well gets picked off by Lycolas in addition to the finishing off of Fultz. So once again, it's Fury with the advantage, bringing it down to a 4v3. Once again, though, SSG, they've thwarted off Fury in the time department. One minute remaining. Luckily enough for Fury, though, they've got the hardest part of gaining control of this area down already, and that is Throne. We see a lot of play through here when it comes to lab and storage. The only piece of the puzzle that they don't really have access to at the current moment is that top floor, and this is where SSG is going to attempt to rebuff the site using these angles upstairs to try and hold onto the doors, potentially some of those Goyo canisters coming out, but with a soft wall like this, it's going to make it a little bit difficult for Bosco to try and assist himself. So many different angles and how he's dead to Hajime. Yeti will be able to take down Hajime as Dark fires back. Rampy, he's the only one standing in between them and their round. And Dark, uh, a little soul searching himself. He went back and found that man that we saw decimating BDS yesterday and decided to bring him to the table. Appreciate the pacing we get more than anything out of that round from Fury. Really never taking their foot off the gas pedal once they get those initial peaks. Just going for the full map clear as quickly as possible. Not even really going for the full second floor clear there over the course of that round as well. Heading pretty much directly for the site. Leaving a couple players on SSG in awkward positions. And for a lot of them as well, not really able to use the full breadth of that utility. We talked about how much they brought to the table. We really didn't see a lot of those operators have their full day in the sun, so to speak, there. Because so many players were going down so early. I think it's mostly due to the fact of how Fury played things around the throne area there with those big picks and also love Lycalus accounting for the fact that Hot and Cold would probably assist after Fultz got downed. Just huge kills coming out of the hard breach there and that was a big game changer for that round. Fury was already so far ahead and as you said they didn't let their foot off the gas. We had Hajime getting in there and then Dark to clean up the uh, rest of the store. So SSG will still be ahead but it's only one round differential at the current moment as we hop into round four. Fury picks going to show up here as we originally had double hard breach in the fold. That hard breach will also switch from Lycolis' like POV over from an ace to a thermite. The second one getting ditched. They have the better capability to be able to deal with insight utility there on BG Man. He's of course going to switch over to the Flores and then I believe a Gmei as well, adding that Jackal into the fold to try and track down these upstairs members of SSG a little bit more proficiently so they can get to the site and set themselves up for an execute much more quickly this time around. Ran out of time in the previous round and were unable to drone out the site appropriately, disallowing them from winning this site take despite the fact that they had player advantage. Fury will be starting us off from the eastern front. Yeti will be inside of Gong with Bosco attempting to assist the area. Looks like he wants to try and get upstairs and find some help around the top of Dragon. That's where Fultz is also going to be located. Hasn't been able to accomplish too much inside of this game, but this could be the greatest opportunity for him to get some kills on the board as he will be the first contact for Dragon, or rather Cash Balcony. The Dragon window will be opened up here by the Thermite. I don't know if we'll see any high-flying movement coming into this area because it'll more than likely mean a dead hard breach. Another kunai out here for Fultz. Going to try and hold this window, and they're dancing back and forth. This is a risky business right now for Lycalus. Fultz ready to take a challenge, but at the same time, he's got that drone lurking around the corner from the two. Thankfully able to get out of range of the explosive threat here. Wants to be able to get at least that one final Azami barricade up. I-9, in the meanwhile, taking a duel against at least one member from SSG. It's Rampy further down the hallway, playing onto the Alibi. Fultz dealing with another Gemini. Meanwhile, back over towards Dragon Window. Hot and Cold wins another exchange, as there's a lot of action going on in plenty of different places here. Hajime, ultimately, the first to fall. However, another down is claimed against Dark, but no, Fultz gets baited and taken down the body. Doesn't follow it through as he should have there to be able to knock out Lycolis as well. Lycolis will be able to finish off Fultz, but that's the only confirmation we have seen so far. Dark, will he be brought back up from the brink? That's a big question indeed. He will. They're able to revive him. Now at very low HP, of course, and that leaves us even at a 4v4.
Well, Fury reconvene at the top of Dragon Stairs and get Dark back up off the floor. He'll stay alive and may be necessary to try and help out Fury with this one. Rampy also quite low HP, but what a position for him over inside of Cafe, playing for the long game here. Obviously, the man count is even. With three people on site, I mean, really for Rampy, there's no point in being there. They have all the means necessary to hold these crosses, so we might as well try and go for a play. Lay. And it looks like it might happen early on here. Rampy's going to go running. He knows that somebody was outside. He's getting chased down now. Let's see if anybody tries to get across the map to try and take him out or potentially some soft breach kills. And actually, it's going to be hot and cold. It's going to take out Lycalus. Some fires back. Cannon fodder both ways. And this site execute is in full swing. Yet he has a lot to say about this, though. Two kills, potentially three. He's going to get the pistol out here. BG man, hot water, swings back into it. And he gets it with the pistol kill instead. BG man, not very much time. And it'll be Bosco to end it all for SSG. SSG ultimately able to close that round down without too much of a problem. They're destabilizing the take early on there against Fury, making them second-guess themselves after they took Dragon Control, and there's not really enough steam to make it work when they finally push themselves further down into the actual throne room area there. Bunk is going to be up next as once more we are just running through the motions. At this point, from SSG only dropped Lab along the way, so we could potentially see them switch that over to Initiation for round number six instead of going back to Lab, but hopefully we'll find out more about that on the next round as they're just going through the motions on the rounds they've already won right now. Defenders, protect your bombs from being defused by I mean, what, man, what a couple of rounds here for Space Station. I have been really enjoying the defenses we've been seeing them put together here on theme park thus far and it's been giving fury a tough time you know they, they've been having kind of uh, a rough go of it when it comes to these openers and figuring out the exact strategy of what space station has to offer i'd say they did a, a pretty bang up job of being able to handle it that time around especially like keeping some solid positioning in between them and faults playing around you know that uh corridor for waiting you know also fury getting that player you know zofia i nine over inside of security so just given Fultz a really tough time on the amount of things that he has to manage. We saw SSG rebuff that area. Hot and Cold comes upstairs to be able to assist him. And just overall, a really good showing from Space Station as they keep the play going, right? Fury keeps trying to do stuff to get around this, and Space Station continues to slam those doors shut. We've got to show that level of confidence here, because here's the problem. If they try to play too conservatively, try to watch out for all the extra moves that SSG are going to throw out against them. SSG is going to have that much more control over the matchup. It's about them subverting the expectations that SSG have about them and trying to continue to be sneaky with their play style here. That worked out pretty well, of course, for the lab clear there, as they worked pretty much directly around the setup due to the level of confidence they were showing. And we have not seen that surface again since that fateful round on number three. It's been outright towards SSG since then, and looking to really lock things in here with another pick up for two rounds in a row yet again that three mp did go out did not and talk out the target they were looking for however so not going to be able to throw in the selma so quickly i9 still making his entry towards break but oh, oh no. no the soft wall instead behind him doesn't even realize it and the drone hole excuse me I think yes actually, yeah, yeah you got it yes rampy sir. there knocking him out through the drone hole down below as he took the one position he could not sit on the inside of indeed the only spot in that entire area that you can't pony up right next to and rest is that drone hole and he gets taken out because of it. Love the play there from Napew, now I-9, but just wasn't able to get things done. And now Fury, uh, I mean, this is just problematic. Down to players, Space Station, full HP, practically full utility across the board as well. What do you do? Well, we're going to find out very shortly here for Fury now. Down two players and with pretty much no map control to play into as well. Yeti going to get blinded out though. Perfect nade to follow it up from Dark as Yeti just will not be able to escape that despite his best efforts. He goes down. First kill is struck. But still one more needed here for Fury to make up the difference and at least tie us up out of 3v3 scoreline. Bosco ready for the challenge if they decide to move themselves to the outside of Cafe. And even worse, these drones probably not necessarily going to spot his position out here. So very good chance for him to get away with at least one on the exit from that position, like Colas and the rest of Fury being very, very careful here now. They know the situation that sits in front of them with the deficit that they're working with. They do not want to overstep their bounds. That's costing them a lot of time to check these angles so carefully. But with that in mind, one kill separates them. That's why you can see them pre-firing, looking for the angles, but Fultz, he's just better. Lycalis, 
taken down by the TCSG 12. Hot and cold pushes it one step further, one step closer to victory in round five. BG Man with one, Bosco right around the corner, and we know how lethal he can be. A quick headshot with the FMG 9 and a huge round difference here between the two. SSG locking things in here towards the tail end of the first half so far. Four rounds already claim, looking to make it five on this upcoming round, but they do have to make that return to the same site where things did not go their way back on the previous hold. Will they rely as heavily on the trap setup? It looks like so far the same exact thing as we saw back in round number three, and indeed it will be. Same exact, a little bit of a change there. Coming in from Yeti as he's going to switch to the mute at the final second. But for the most part, it is the same lineup. We'll see if they try to play this positionally a little bit different as they had a lot of presence upstairs last time that Fury, for the most part, ignored. And as a result of that, we're able to get themselves into the site with a lot more confidence. Oh, yeah, that was a little bit of an awkward play there for Yeti as well in the shield. The grenade lands right in front of it. I think he was more worried about the angle that was being held from the door, so he didn't want to run over towards yellow stairs. So he mm. thought, okay, if you know, if he didn't cook this correctly, maybe I can get past it and over towards the arcade area before I die. Uh, but he practically ran right into the line of fire of the frag grenade, and that's what got him into trouble there. But again, I think he was more worried about Dark holding that angle, and if he cuts to the right, he more than likely gets shot. So really pick your poison in that scenario. But either way, round six, the last Last round here before we get to the half and we switch sides. I-9, he was looking down gridlock initially, but uh, instead lands on the Sophia. Understandable. The Understandable, yeah, really. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, we haven't had too many flanks from SSG either. A lot of them have uh, been pretty heads-up gunfights. They've been able to just take control of Absolutely the case, and even when they have been able to deploy towards this flanks, they've been pretty straightforward to read into as well. It's sort of expected move, so Fury, I don't think he's going to have much of a tra problem, excuse me, establishing just a general flank watch. They might have some this. trauma after what they've been uh, <laughs> having over these last couple of days, so I think that that's probably where you default to, to be honest. <laughs> So we've got SSG ready for the challenge from Fury. And Fury beginning to work their way back in here now, taking those initial bits of map control, starting out mainly from Drum on the first floor to carve their way in there with some supporting players beginning to explore the options on the Dragon Balcony for second floor control. Also, you can see, though, got a little bit of a lurk going on here. So you have the push coming forward from the Legion. Going to potentially try and actually contest against the gong control that Fury's going for, but he's got to watch out. He's got the side entry coming back in. The shots are there from Hotton, but the landing is not yet to be seen. However, I-9 pokes out. His posterior showing just a little bit there, and that gives Hotton the shots he needs to take out I-9. Fury, all that time droning, and what did it get you? A dead I-9. They missed drone hot and cold. Oh, what an angle that would have been there on the Dragon Stairs, too. Would have been absolutely disgusting. But Lycalus instead will take down hot and cold. He's going to take a little bit of damage. The Goo Mine also adding to that problem. It's going to be four versus four. Fury, they got decent time remaining here. We just need to really see them hot, too. This has been a big issue for them and a hot commodity that SSG has been able to continue to take control of on the defensive end. Prevents kind of the worst case scenario, too, as we saw in the previous round there, where you were potentially going to be looking at Fury trying to work this as a 3v5. Now they've got a much more realistic chance. Oh, no. Faults, though. Oh, no. Ready for the challenge. He knocks out two, including the case carrier. Hajime and PG Man are all that remains. They got to scramble over to Throne. They didn't even successfully clear out Fultz. He's still here, still holding the case control. And he may very well be aware of that. Oh, God. Well. Hajime now dropped as well, I believe, by Fultz, leaving just BG Man in the fight. He put the windbreaker on, John. He's hot now. The jersey wasn't doing it for him. Had to switch out clothes, had to put the sleeves on, and now he's gunning them down. A triple kill for Fultz in this round. We're back in business, baby. Rampy, give it to me. BG Man goes down. Space Station, a 5-1 split. Dominant half here on Theme Park. Shot it down, and actually the same exact result we had from our previous game. These games are looking more and more alike the deeper we get into them, interestingly enough. Uh, man, I, I swear, I could have amnesia and knew what happened with these <laughs> games. They're just like, yeah, well, if you've seen one, you've seen them all, haven't you? But uh, That's the unfortunate. APAC storyline for it. So Very unfortunate, man. And like the my biggest problem is like I've been such a fan of NB Taylor for so long. You know, go on going all the way back to Mantis FPS. I don't know how many people still remember that all the way back in SI twenty nineteen. That was the first time you and I ever casted together. So it's been some time, but uh never been able to get it done on an international stage, man. It's uh it's kinda sad, but I'm hoping that it comes for him at some moment in time. We'll have to see how the rest of APAC is doing after this matchup here because Fury is up against a wall, much like their regional 
Conrad sitting in the other group at the moment for Sandbox Fury. If they drop this matchup, going to be sitting at less than a 10% chance, almost less than a 5% chance, I think, actually, to qualify for the playoff stage. We'll need to be perfect in every single matchup from this point forward. And also somewhat reliant on the top end teams also dropping off when we go for the second round of matches as well. Will be a tough ask for sure for both Fury and potentially Sandbox if this matchup goes the way that we are expecting it to here. And SSG ultimately closes out. But it's a new half, a new day for both of these teams. Maybe Fury will have a little bit more to bounce back into this as of yet. One of these things is not like the other, and it's Fury's defensive operator lineup in comparison to what we were seeing from Space Station Gaming. A lot less defensive utility dedicated towards slowing down your opposition. No real traps across the board here. Yes, they do have the Banshees, but past that, it's just a lot of utility to be able to hold on to your positioning. Electro Claws, ADSs, you know, Azami working her way in here as well with her Kiba barriers. So it's really going to be up to Fury to win these gunfights and play into that defensive setup rather than trying to go for what we saw from SSG, really delaying that time. But obviously that could become a part of Fury's strategy depending on how SSG want to work this map. Fury with a nice slow opener here, not going to be over. Michaelis, we got a, we got quite a few Kiba barriers in the pocket here, buddy. What's going on with this? Four knives? Hasn't been challenged anywhere as of yet. So maybe just trying to play this dynamically, waiting for the first bit to come and get thrown at him. Dark seems like he's going to get most of the early aggression. Could certainly see those Kiba barricades come out to help. But meanwhile, Fultz, he's already in arcade, clearing it out, knocking down Dark. He gets overwhelmed by about three players from SSG trying to take him down there in one form or another. All right, so BG Man was off-site, just rotated back in or got Hajime in, whatever that transaction was there. They reinforced the wall and were able to buff up the site a bit, but Dark was off on his own island up against the space station clear. That's just a bad idea right there. Nicole is still sitting on pretty much the full pack of the Kiba Barricades as well. Finally used one. I think he's just kind of waiting for the breach to potentially be made or waiting for a clear picture to be shown in terms of how SSG is going to attack this site and then try to just spam them in at that point. I think it's going to be the plan here for Lycolis. Very curious to see, though, as he has certainly been restrained to the inside of the site and is kind of just itching at the opportunity to chuck some of this utility out. All right, well, Rampy on one of his key operators throughout the years, Buck. This drone is going to get muted up. He'll be able to get rid of that and potentially see if somebody is hanging out around Furnace. And that is where Lycalus is still chilling. Looks like it, it, they actually want to try and use those as pseudo castles for the ceiling and just to try and block off a lot of holes. So pretty great idea, honestly. This is the beauty of having a character like this nowadays in Rainbow Six is you can get so creative with their utility. And of course, again, playing oh. the interior of the site. That nade coming very, very close to the area of damage that would have been able to knock out Lycola is sitting on the inside of there. Lycola as well, having distributed most of this utility at this point. Not a whole lot that SSG would be removing from this factor of play. Yeti finally knocking down Lycola and is going to be able to leap into the rest of armor here as well. Nitro out from I9, but it's not singing the way they need it to. Another pickup from Rampy here. Just BG Man and Hajime left in the fight, but Hajime holding his own on the throne side of things here. Oh, and Hajime and BG Man making it work together. Suddenly, it's just the planter remaining as everyone else on the team goes down in less than a second. Does Bosco have the clutch those. Keep in mind, one of them is boxed out. Can't come back in through main dragon door. They have to go for the direct cross. Hajime goes down. Bosco to finish him off. Now it's down to the 1v1 here. This flash is chucked out. Well, out for a relocation where Bosco does it yet again inside of the 1v2. Clutching it out one more time. They done did it again, John, and it's all due to a critical blunder from Fury. You know what they did? What did they do? They stopped looking at where he was planning, both of them. None of them holding the angle and they let Bosco escape. They let that man, the man that really never misses a clutch opportunity. Get out of the one area that if he escapes, they have a really good chance of killing him. Uh, just really unfortunate timing there for Fury. Might have been some magazine swaps or what have you, but either way, a blunder that gives Bosco that split second to just get out of that info base and move off into the ether, into the shadows, and really take advantage of Fury trying to push forward and take control, recapture what they had on that other end. I really do 
do like the strategy from them. I'm, I really like what we saw from the Azami there. Yeah, yeah, the I thought that was very creative. Yeah. yeah, and that's why I really wanted to point that out in the early round. You know, when you see somebody stacking up utility like that, these are professional players. They're not doing that because you know they're silly, right? And I was like, oh yeah, I'm, I forgot to put all of my Kiba barriers down. You know, like that that would literally never happen. But uh, either way, Fury are going to burn their timeout, and we got to say it, John. It's six one. I hate these timeouts. I always have. Uh, it's it's the, uh, it's too far gone. I mean, really, I think the screenwriter for this show is getting a little uh, lazy. Okay, it's like this, this is a rerun <laughs> for the last game now. They took the pause at the same time too now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just it's very unfortunate. I mean, you you can give Fury or any team that does this the benefit of the doubt because usually when they get to the half, it's better mark, it's better to use it than not use it. Exactly. Like that, that's right? that's that's the first one, right? And also the other thing being you you switch sides, right? So when it's a five one split, you're like, yep. well, if I use a timeout now, all my stuff's gonna be for that other side. So I might as well try and help them out here, but I'd much rather it just be used earlier on on that other side, get some communication going there, maybe try and pick up some rounds on that side that you're having some trouble with, but, you know, beggars can't be choosers, and as you said, you might as well use it rather than lose it. All right, well, let's get into it. A full repick in the meanwhile for SSG. All five players swapping to a new operator. This is going to include a Montaigne pickup from Hotton. So let's see how this goes for the rest of SSG. Oh as we're going to have a few interesting pickups here. The, the, the Thatcher coming in here as well for Yeti. So let's see how this plays out. Dude, Yeti's got to be off the C4 this morning or something, dude. He <laughs> ate like three of those protein bars. He went to the gym, probably like deadlifted like 700 pounds or something. Oh my goodness, Space Station Gaming, especially since picking up Yeti, have looked so dynamic in their play, very creative with some of the things they've been doing recently as well. And this is a very much needed game for SSG as well, obviously a little bit of a tough day for them yesterday, coming close in at least one of their matches, specifically the one versus BDS, but just could not trigger the overtime and push it over the edge there against W7M, a little bit more one-sided, and that was the way they ended the day, if I recall correctly, as well. So a good way to bounce back into today here with a potential 7-1 to one of course, pending the result of this and any following rounds from Fury here, if we are to assume that this one goes SSG's way. Well, the last time you and I saw Napew or I-9, he almost broke the record for most kills on LAN when playing for Elevate. Uh, and then it was... Actually, no, 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 I do believe I'm actually wrong about that, so apologies. But he was on that roster at the time when that did happen. Either way, he was still definitely a key and pivotal piece for that Elevate roster. But here today, uh, not looking the greatest. 1-7 to start the day off up against Space. Station Gaming. Now, obviously, he can attempt to right his wrongs in what could be the last round here. Uh, we'll have to see how that continues on. About halfway through this one, SSG using those Rotero drones to their full advantage. Fultz not finding anything on that one, but was able to clear out a lot of the area and allows SSG to push forward off of that information. Hardwick being set up now by SSG as they prepare to carve their way into the depths of the site. Gonna be focusing up, of course, on the catch to office breach first. See if this allows for them to get the access they need, and more importantly, if they can begin to push Fury players out of position. Hot and cold, of course, all the way up to the initiation room as well. So plenty of control already going into SSG's favor, but it's the transition into the site, especially for this specific site attack that can often be the toughest, and oftentimes be where we see the first kill and the first bit of the attack start to fall apart. Well, Space Station, they spent a lot of time setting up this execute, and we're about to see it fully flushed out here. It's going to be approached from the east towards the west for the Bunk Daycare defensive site. Going to have Fultz, I do believe, trying to slip through the cracks here into Cafe, completely unbeknownst by Fury. As we noticed from SSG setup, they had a shield, a man. Waiting for anyone in the wings over on that end in Space Station. They've done it, John. They've hit their mark. Two big kills, a plant going down for hot and cold. And I don't know where this denial is going to come from. The Nitro Cell down Yeti, but another player goes down for Fury. Space Station Gaming, they get the plant, and they'll force Fury's hand. It's a two versus three, unless Yeti is picked back up here. Bosco oh. makes a mincemeat out of Hajime. It's down to BG Man to try and save this game. Oh, Yeti no. already punching the GG in. He knew what was up. Space Station gaming 7-1. SSG shut things down in very similar fashion, in fact, almost the exact same fashion as our previous matchup here on the stream B as well. Either way, a definitive first matchup for SSG to put them onto the board with a solid three points, keeping them in the running still to potentially make it out of the playoffs. They'll be waiting for the result, of course, for BDS versus W7M to see who they really need to priority target on the second go of games here to make sure they overtake them. Either way, we're gonna go to a short break, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be back in a few minutes to break this match down.
I'm Nicholas Martin, but you know me as Pingu. I'm a two-time Rainbow Six Siege World Champion and former top Rainbow Six Siege player in Pro League. Welcome to my Siege Ranked Bootcamp. We're talking 20 seconds left on the clock. You got the diffuser in hand. What do you do? Play the way that you're comfortable with because you have confidence when you're in this position. That is when you're gonna be at your very best. Good luck. Welcome back once again, ladies and gentlemen. The action here on StreamB is all wrapped up. If you're looking for active gameplay, you're going to want to head over to the primary channel. Now, of course, on Twitch, it's going to be slash Rainbow Six. If you're watching us here now, just delete the Bravo from your URL bar, and that'll take you to the other active match still ongoing in the midst of this group between W7M, of course, and Team BDS. But in the meanwhile, we just watched Fury against Space Station, and Space Station, they're going to make relatively quick work of Fury here. APAC having a little bit of a rough day. Stakes. Yeah, they let Fury know where they were ranked inside of this group, didn't they? They put him right down into the bottom of the barrel after this game. A 7-1 victory from SSG. And honestly, they made it look easy. There was really only one round where we saw Fury really standing tall. Uh, well, actually, you can say possibly one more where we saw that clutch from Bosco. But either way, it was really an SSG event overall here on Theme Park. For me, it was really the confidence level we were seeing out of SSG. No second guessing their own play style or their strategies throughout the course of that matchup. And that led to a lot of very successful rounds. Some big clutches, of course, coming into those from Bosco as well, taking care of two rounds in a 1v2 fashion. So some excellent stuff coming out from him. Alongside some negatives that we saw, of course, that weren't really there in the previous match from Fury, the most notable one being I-9. A great presence in their matchup last night, but unfortunately here today, gone a little bit missing. And the rest of the team, of course, improving their own performance, but just not enough to be able to make up for the difference. Difference there. We'll go ahead and take a look at the way the matches are standing here, or the match, this this match specifically, is standing, how the stats panned out. And you'll see that in front of you now, especially with what we were talking about there for I-9 a second ago. He only picks up one kill in this game. Yeah, and I love that you bring that up, because he had a cost of 14%, and this is not exactly something that we expect out of APU, especially at LAN. He was actually a fan favorite uh, when he was at SI this year with Elevate. Everybody loving him for his style, his play, his finesse, but uh, a little lackluster when it came to this game, huh? Yeah, and in the meanwhile, obviously, for the most part, everyone on SSG on point for this game here and having a moment every once in a while. For Fury, for me, once again, it was the fact that we were seeing them get read out far too quickly and then just not being able to innovate, much like the matchup last night versus BDS, where they were struggling once again after some of those initial rounds. SSG not even giving them the opportunity, though, due to that clutch capability that we saw there. A few rounds. Potential for this one to have gone like 7-3 or 7-4 as well, but like I said, that brings it all back to Bosco, where we saw those massive clutches contribute to the denial of those rounds and the fairly one-sided nature of this matchup here. But that's good news for the SSG fans at home, of course. That does pad their stats pretty well in the eventuality they tie with another team further up in the group, of course. That'll help them out for being able to break that tie. Well, indeed. Bosco really showing how he was able to really be named the smoke main of North America, right? He's just so good with all of those weapons. Let's check 